we praise thy name. Hymn number 721. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace, goodness, love, and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Good morning. So as we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are going to go even more deeply into that chapter 6 of John's Gospel on the bread of life. And the invitation to truly eat that flesh and drink that blood so that Jesus can become the life and the salvation for the world through us. So to prepare for that, let's bring all that we've experienced to the Lord right now, all the successes that we've had, the joys, but also the challenges, the sorrows, the sufferings, everything in our life. Let's place that at the invitation of the Lord in the Lord's care so that he can transform that into that gift of his risen body and blood that we will receive and that we will live. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill.
O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, come, eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I should have introduced myself at the beginning, Father David Bursmeyer. I'm a priest of the Archdiocese, a senior priest uh, slash retired, so I can help out wherever 
I got asked, and uh, Father David Sobolski asked me to uh, lead a retreat for the St. Patrick uh, staff, and so that's why I'm here. Notice the first reading from the Book of Wisdom. Why did the church choose that as a reading? Because as we heard the gospel, the people are, are, are kind of miffed, mystified. Uh, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life with you. How can we, how can, I mean, how can we do, I mean, think about it. Someone says that to you, eat my flesh and drink my blood. It's like, I don't know, that's person. I might want to stay a little bit away from that person kind of a little bit. So they're mystified. So the church ties that particular reading to, a, to the Book of Wisdom to remind us that there's a wisdom of God that is deeper than human wisdom. That what we might think of on the surface doesn't make sense. In God, it has, takes on a deeper meaning. So I want to talk about that, continue to develop that uh, chapter 6 of John's Gospel. This is the, kind of the fourth excerpt uh, that we get. First, a few weeks ago, was the multiplication of the loaves and fishes where the people were fed. Uh, and it says there's 12 fragments of baskets left full. In other words, hey, the Lord has enough to feed us, and even the fragments left over will be enough to feed anyone who comes to him. And then they cross the sea, and the people find Jesus, and they challenge him to try to, uh, he challenges them, were well, you here because you got your belly full, or are you really here to, to deepen your connection to the true bread of life? So he invites them to see him as that bread of life. And in today's gospel, uh, he repeats that, that he's the living bread that came down from heaven and the bread that he will give will be his flesh for the life of the world. And as we heard, he'll go on to say that you, his, his flesh is true food, his blood is true drink. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life in you, but those who do will have life everlasting, life eternal. Now clearly, in John's Gospel, this is meant for, to trigger uh, our sense of Eucharist, to understand Eucharist more deeply. Because in John's Gospel, if you go to the Last Supper, the Final Supper, it doesn't have the words that the other Gospel have where Jesus takes bread, lifts it up, and says, this is my body, or takes the cup and says, this is my blood. These words take place in this chapter. John absolutely believes that, has the Final Supper, but he's focused on the meaning of Eucharist, how to be servants to one another. But he's already prepared us for that by by this, by this uh, chapter 6 of the bread of life, that Jesus is going to be, his, his bread, uh, his flesh is going to be, uh, the life he gives will be, his flesh will be life for the world, life and salvation for the world. So how can that take place? We're not cannibals, we're not going to literally chomp on each other. It only can take place in a Eucharistic way. That's the, that's the awesomeness of Eucharist. The Lord has given us, has left us a way in which we become his flesh and blood so that we can be his flesh and blood out into the world. It's interesting in Aramaic and Hebrew, they don't have the Greek understanding of the word body. There is no separate, there's not a word for flesh and a word for body. If Hebrews wanted to say, or the time Jesus in his Aramaic language wanted to say kind of the whole person, he would say flesh and blood, that, that phrase that we use, flesh and blood. And so when we think of the Last Supper and, and where he says, this is my body, New Testament is written in Greek. Probably more original, probably what Jesus actually said in his own language was, this is my flesh. So John in some way preserves that more ancient understanding uh, that that Jesus is talking about his flesh. You're like, well, how can this be? How can this be? Precisely, how can it be except through Eucharist? Because what is Eucharist? Eucharist is exactly the way, the gift that the Lord has left us to take all that we are and unite it to that fullness of eternal life in God so that in such a way that everything that we experience in life can be transformed by Eucharist and become part of that wholeness and healing and fullness of life in God. And we are invited to do that on that week-by-week -week basis. Take everything, bring it into the Lord's care. Let it become part of that life eternal. Because eternal life is not a series of discrete moments. It's the fullness, the wholeness of life experienced through God. 
And so the Eucharist is structured, liturgy of the word, liturgy of the Eucharist, in a way that allows, that, that allows Jesus, this is how Jesus structured it, to take who we are and bring it into that gift of life eternal so that we then can become that gift of life eternal to others. So there's kind of five invitations in Eucharist that come from Jesus. The first is Jesus invites us to gather in his name. You're here however you're here. But let's remember it's the Lord who wants you here. You might also want to be here. That's secondary. That's secondary. The Lord wants you here. And ideally, the Lord wants everyone here, especially on Sunday. Now, we can't fit everyone into one church. But think about it. I mean, that's where, the, that's where this whole thing of uh, Sunday obligation, you know, you, have, you can't miss Mass on Sunday or else it's a sin and so forth. That's where it all comes from, right? That's the negative side of it. The more positive side of it and the better understanding of it is, well, of course the Lord wants everyone here every Sunday because precisely we're all part of the body of Christ. He wants all of humanity in some way to offer their lives to that once for all offering. He wants all of humanity's experience to become transformed into a gift for the world, for a gift for the salvation of the world. So when we're missing somebody here, we're missing a portion of human experience. So that's where that comes from. But we're here, and so good. So those are going to take us. So we, we said yes to the invitation of the Lord. Secondly, the Lord wants to reshape us, and that's what the liturgy of the word, that's what the word proclaimed does. Uh, not, not so much the homily, although that hopefully helps, but the living word that's proclaimed. Uh, because it's not just that we come, as we, we come as we are, but it's not just that the Lord leaves us that way. The Lord will challenge us to reshape us, to go deeper. Notice in today's reading, uh, or, or last week, he taught, the, the people said, well, uh, Moses gave us manna from the, uh, when we were in the desert. You know? So that was a real miracle. Yeah, you gave us the multiplication of loaves, but Moses gave us manna in the desert from God. And Jesus says in today's gospel that there's something even more than that. There's a living bread that comes from, down from heaven that is greater than the manna, even greater than the multiplication of the loaves. The real miracle isn't that you got your bellies filled and the mo- loaves are multiplied. That's neither here nor there in some ways, unless you really eat of me, whether, unless you really open your life fully to receive the fullness of my life that I want to give you. And so we come as we are, but we have to go deeper. We have to take the joys and see them as gifts of God, the, 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 the sufferings and sacrifices and hurts, and see them as opportunities to somehow give witness to God's goodness and love, to take the, the things, the people that we need to forgive or need to be forgiven from and bring that in a way that can be transformed. So the Lord wants us to go deeper and the, 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 the word shapes us. So the Lord invites us, he shapes us by his word, and then, as we're going, we're going to go into the Eucharistic prayer, he lets us take all of that and become part of that once for all eternal offering, the Eucharistic prayer, where through sacrifice, the the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we unite everything that we brought in our lives to that once for all sacrifice, everything in our lives. And therefore, if we do that, then everything that we brought is gonna be transformed by the living risen Lord into a gift for eternity. It's going to, so, so, so the very littlest experience we've had to the most profound experience, the very best to the very worst, can be transformed into a gift that can help transform the world. But that's only if we become the flesh for the life of the world that the Lord says he's going to be. And that's why he needs to feed us. That's the fourth invitation. Come and eat. Come and drink. Take and eat. Take and drink. Let me feed you. Let me be your nourishment. At the depth of your being, hunger for me. Hunger for who I am. And then the fifth invitation, now go forth, proclaim the gospel with your lives. Be my body broken, my flesh broken down, my blood poured out for the life of the world. John's gospel beautifully invites us to a meditation on the Eucharist, a profound understanding where we're not just somehow externally celebrating a ritual And we're not just receiving communion for ourselves. We're not just fulfilling a Sunday obligation. But we are, at the invitation of the Lord, being transformed, reconnected, re-membered, reconnected to one another in such a way that we become the living presence of Christ to the world if 
we go forth and are willing to have our lives become flesh for others, broken and poured out for others. There's one more Sunday coming up that will finish off the discourse where many people find this too hard. Even some of the closest disciples find it very, very hard with Jesus saying, can't do it. And Peter will, he'll ask Peter, you know, do you think the same way? And we know his answer about having the words of everlasting life. But I just want to close with the final, final part of that. As we look at our lives and how do we give meaning to our lives? How do we give the deepest meaning to our lives? How do we give meaning to the hearts, the heartaches, the love, the pain, the anguish, the joys, everything that goes on in our life, the things we do with our professions and, and all the things that we're called to? How do we give the deepest meaning to those? It's the Eucharist that allows us to do it. And so like Peter, when we're faced with this, rather than kind of saying, this is too hard, Lord, or I can't quite believe that, Lord, we can be people who say, yes, Lord, to whom else can we go? To whom else can we go? For you are the one, this is now my words, you are the one who transforms everything in our lives and makes it a gift for the life, the salvation, the goodness of the world. Thanks be to God. There, we stand and confess our I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we'll look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life for the world to come. Amen. And so with hearts that desire God's grace to be at work visibly in this world, we offer our intercessions. Let us pray. For, the, for Father Jerry Slowinski on his birthday, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That members of the church spread throughout the world may be filled with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are ignorant of Christ may receive the gospel message of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may provide all who lack access to quality education the opportunity to grow in knowledge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may help all gathered here to grow in our devotion to the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died may rejoice as they join the communion of saints in the fullness of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For we bring to you all the many people who have asked for our prayers, all the many parts of our life that we know we need your prayer to be at work in us. Help us truly to be a people of intercession so that what we do here is not for ourselves alone, 
but for the good of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to God, our Almighty Father. I accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all. O Lord, receive our oblation, these offerings of bread and wine, by which is brought forth a glorious exchange. For we offer what you have given us, and then we request and pray that through your grace we may merit to receive the gift of your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things and giving us a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. Full of your glory, O Son, I in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son, I in the highest. Amen. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, in Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so taught by our divine Savior, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's own peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
his offering of himself. May we who have been nourished by his word and by the gift of his sacrament now truly say yes to becoming that life for the world through our lives being broken and poured out as the flesh and blood of your son for the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in joy to proclaim the gospel with our lives. Amen.